Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. As we continue this Confederate campaign, it is the end of November 1863. I'm looking at the front lines map. You can see the French control this area in and around Cincinnati and southwest Ohio. We've made incursions into Kentucky all the way up to Louisville. We control uh, the French still actually control around St. Louis, even though the army's not there anymore. We've got three Union armies kind of roaming. Well, one Union army with two corps roaming in that area. Uh, I've moved Stonewall Jackson over to Raleigh uh, with the idea that we can clean up this mess in North Carolina. We do still have a Union army down in Jacksonville, Florida, but I'm not too worried about them right now. My immediate concern is this area here so we can consolidate everything in eastern Kentucky. Uh, we can move out from Bowling Green and finish this off. I'd like to get St. Louis or I'd like to get Missouri and Kentucky to secede. If that happens, I believe the war is over. Uh, as we are at 34 national morale for the Union, and each one of those states leaving the Union would drop it by five, which would get it under 25, and that would be a win. So let's see what happens in today's episode. I'm looking at Virginia and I'm thinking I'm going to get a little aggressive here. Uh, I don't know if I want to move out and try to hit the first corps here because he might send these armies down. Uh, let me see what all he's got here. So, uh, second corps, 21,000 men. Third corps is only 2,300. This first corps, that's only about 45,000 men there. I could send Johnston up to deal with them. And I could send Longstreet out to deal with these guys. I think I can do both at the same time. Though, part of me thinks maybe it's better off to go after one army all at once. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll send the whole Army of Northern Virginia up here, hit these guys. And then once we've cleared them out, then maybe we worry about taking care of the ones to the west. So it looks like uh, Longstreet's going to hit the Army of Tennessee and the Army or headquarters and the uh, First Corps of the Army of the Susquehanna. Wasn't expecting that uh, to happen because I guess they started moving in on me. So we're going to hit them first. That actually works out nicely because we can defeat him and then get north and help with that situation. This might be an opportunity to break out of the problems we've had in, in Virginia. Well, this is less than ideal. We are deploying all the way down here in the corner south of the swampy area around the Chickahominy River. Uh, and that means the Union's probably got a big area that he's already protecting. I'm hoping he's back this way a little f further. As long as we can get our troops across over at least up to Mechanicsville, I think we'll be okay. I've sent my two cavalry brigades out as lead scouts. They're going to just secure a little bit of breathing room for us on this side by getting up to these areas here. And I think that'll work. And then we've got our three infantry divisions marching in column up along the road. This is my replacement division back here. We're just going to leave them where they are because they're not combat units. And it looks like we're good. So the next step, of course, is to figure out where we want to have this combat take place. And I feel like I'd rather march up this road, come around, and hit him from over here. Maybe send one division this way, send the other two divisions this way, and hit him from the north. I don't know if that'll work out or not, but that's what... I'm going to try. It's 11.20 on the morning of the first day of the battle. Uh, I am a little concerned about my morale situation. The morale is terrible. It's 29.7 overall. Most of my units are showing somewhere in that area. Uh, fighting spirit is what it's capped by. It's capped at the highest it can be. Their fighting spirit's only 27%. And so that's what the morale is. For some reason, that's our cap, probably because they've been surrounded in Richmond for over a year. I'm guessing that has a lot to do with it. So we're going to have to be very careful. We do outnumber the enemy, but things are not in our favor when it comes to morale. I'm going to try to keep Longstreet as central as possible to where these units are. But I'm trying to give them time to stabilize before we go into any kind of combat situation. It's going to be... Anderson's division that's going to be moving into position over here. And then the Sexy Division and Hood's division are going to be launching the main attack from the north. As I expected, he's right where I thought he'd be, and he's dug in there, so it makes total sense that we launch our attack in the way that we've decided. Uh, going to get this Anderson's division into place first. 
before we start moving in with the other ones because I expect that he, we'll start seeing him shift once that happens. Once he starts seeing these guys coming in from that side. First shots of the battle are fired by our try to go fist. That's our 12 pounder Whitworths who are engaging in some counter battery fire trying to deal with this battery up here. I'm trying to get these other units in a place where they can fire, but so far I haven't been able to find one. Looks like the rich men might be able to fire now from where they are. I've been moving them around a little bit trying to find a good firing spot. Calamari Crusaders have 24 pounder howitzers, which are more kind of anti-personnel. And I just don't see them. They're right on the edge of being able to hit these guys, but they're not quite there. All right, maybe we can neutralize that battery. It's time to go ahead and start moving our divisions forward. McCulloch's gonna go right there. Hood's gonna come up all the way up here and then try to come in from that side. Oh, we hit the end of the day, okay. Now we're gonna be re redeploying. And unfortunately we can't get where we wanna be. So far, um, we are showing some casualties. I think we brought those casualties into the battle with us because we definitely haven't lost 1,300 men. We have, however, taken out 15 of his guns. He's only got 35 to our 74, so big advantage in artillery. Uh, we're gonna shift McCulloch right over to this spot here. Hood's gonna move up into this spot. We're gonna swing him around, try to take the objective. And uh, if these guys start to move to counter that, then we'll advance with Anderson. I feel pretty good about the strategy, especially since I've got the numbers. So he does have a division in reserve back here, and it looks like they're gonna shift to counter my move, and that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and move Gonzo's Gators up. First, let's get them firing long range. Once everybody's in position, I'll probably deploy some skirmishers. Waiting for Breckenridge to get his brigade going. And then Hood's making the long march around this way. Calgary Highlanders have their perk. So again, we're going to wait and see what happens here. He's shifting some cav over that way. Let's put skirmishers out there. What are we doing, Breckenridge? Let's go. Okay, so he's got that cab sitting there, so let's go ahead and advance with Anderson's division. Where can we get this artillery to where they can actually do some good here? All right, Hood, let's go. Get yourself in position. Remember, morale's a major concern for me. It's really super low. His isn't great, though. We're showing 600 more casualties than him. I think that was something we just carried into the battle. Why did Hood stop? Keep moving, boys. Anderson, come on, dude. Sometimes I don't understand why the orders don't go through. All right, he has shifted out of his fortifications, which is the perfect time now to bring Anderson forward. Hood's going to be pretty far away from Longstreet for future orders. I'm going to shift Longstreet's headquarters over that way a little bit. Breckenridge still not moving forward. There he goes. I think. Now let's pull the skirmishers back in. Get the mainline units firing. I want to get up to this creek bed here that offers a little bit of cover.
And that only works because we've got Anderson's division moving into position. Otherwise, we'd be taking a lot of fire right here. All right, hood, swing down. Keep the artillery back, though. He sent his cab out to meet Anderson's division and slow them down a little bit. Smart move. Bring the mounted Canadians up on this side. Not entirely sure what the Hampton Roads guard's doing here. Heavy casualties, Cardwell Crusaders. Right off the bat. It's okay, Hood's division's coming in now. We're gonna start shifting this bar. Hungarian impalers moved up. What are we firing at? There's, a, there's some artillery over here. Okay, Hood. Let's do this. You can see Hood's division's in pretty rough shape in terms of morale. Garnet's uh, Devil's Own Brigade is nervous. Calgary Highlanders are nervous. Longstreet's own under Donaldson, unstable. Texas boys are stable. I'm gonna slow things down so I can move around a little easier here. All right, we've already shifted this heavily in our favor. Come on, Anderson. I guess Anderson's whole division's firing on this cab, which is what he wanted with that cab. That was to slow me down. And it worked. Who was wounded? Breckenridge. Former Vice President of the United States, John C. Breckenridge, wounded in action. He was Vice President under James Buchanan. Alright, we're gonna move Anderson up. Otherwise, we're just gonna sit tight because uh, we're in a pretty good position here. Now. Casualties heavily shifting in our favor. Already 17.6% for him. This is huge, because this is a battle outside of Richmond. We need to break that Union stranglehold on Virginia. It's been rough. We haven't been able to do much with the Army of Northern Virginia, and that's where most of my men are. So if we can break free here, that would be huge. I'm just going to sit tight with everybody. We're going to let Anderson squeeze in. We need to inflict 32% casualties to get a major victory. That should not be a problem. I don't want to go charging in with units that are precariously low on morale. Oh, we lost our artillery over here see that coming. Texas boys are good. Donaldson's Longstreet Zone, they're taking some casualties, but I think we'll be okay. Calgary Highlanders have lost almost 500 men. Oh yeah, this is, this is a solid victory in the making as far as the numbers go. Let's get this artillery up. Calgary Highlanders taking a lot. Breckenridge low on ammunition. He's right here in the center. Yeah, he's about to break. All we gotta do is sit here. There's no, no need to move at all. We've got fire superiority all along the line. There he goes. All right, we need 32% casualties for the enemy to turn this into a major victory. I think that should be good just by sitting here. We don't even need to charge in to do that. He's at 31% now. I love it when a plan comes together. That plan worked out exactly the way I envisioned it, the way I hoped it would. He was right, right where I thought he'd be, and it worked out beautifully. Now we'll just keep
keep sitting here and shooting until it's over. That is what we like to see. Longstreet takes it to Napoleon Dana. 10,000 casualties for Dana's Union soldiers. And so now, hopefully that gives a boost to morale to our Confederate soldiers in the Richmond area. And now we turn on the other Union force and try to take them out and we break the Union stranglehold on Central Virginia. Glorious victory at Richmond Bridge. So that was down here south. I don't know why, uh, for some reason, we were giving the wrong orders to Longstreet and he was marching in the opposite direction. So we're gonna try to fix that. Union down to 33 national morale. Ours isn't much better though. Now let's see if we can move on the other force. Okay, that these guys are pulling back now. Why is that there a disaster at Fredericksburg? I wasn't even fighting there. That was just the Army of Northern Virginia headquarters. That's not even an army. The battle of Richmond's actually a uh, defensive battle. It's because the Army of Northern Virginia didn't have offensive standing. So we'll get Longstreet back up there. Trying to give Johnston the same aggressive stance, but I'm not able to at the moment. Well, it looks like the French may be moving to help relieve the situation in Richmond. That would be amazing. They've been coming all the way up from Texas. They marched through the north, through Ohio and into Pennsylvania, and now they're coming south into Virginia. There we go. We, we won a victory here at Richmond, so now what I need to do is I need to switch make sure all of our core are set to uh, Longstreet's not in a position where he can be on an aggressive stance so he's not going to be able to reinforce Joe Johnston in the event that Johnston is attacked but I think we've got a little bit of freedom here for the time being his national supports down to third or national morales down to 32 now I'm gonna upgrade some of these supply depots Gonna build a supply depot for the Army of Mississippi. And then once their supply, because right now they're only 26% supply, and we're hitting into winter anyway. Once they're well supplied, I might build a second depot actually. Uh, we'll go ahead and figure out who we want to attack with that army. All right, this is gonna be interesting. We've got Henry Halleck about to hit us with a pretty significant size force of 60,000 men. I've only got about 35,000 here. Part of me thinks it's time to withdraw and I'll send Beauregard down from Louisville to hit them and we'll try to combine those forces uh, rather than engage here. I think I'm in a position where I don't really have to engage. So let's, oh boy, he's gonna hit me again. So I might not have the opportunity to withdraw the way I'd like to. Let's slow things down a little bit here. All right, let's try to get Beauregard down there if we can. Interesting things are afoot. I started moving Joe Johnston's second corps north up toward Fredericksburg, and he's pulling back to Washington because the French are moving into the Shenandoah Valley. They're somewhere I've actually lost sight of them at this point, but they're somewhere in the neighborhood of Winchester. In fact, they've captured Winchester. They've also taken Grafton. I've pulled the Army of the Kanawha back to Charleston so they can resupply for the winter. I'm pulling the Army of East Tennessee back to Knoxville, and now I'm pursuing with Beauregard's Army of Tennessee to try and uh, sneak in behind. And then if I can do this right, I might actually try to converge okay now he's starting to move those armies north uh, so at this point we'll we'll tell Stephen Dill Lee uh, to try and pursue but at a slow enough pace that hopefully we can combine these forces and hit the Union with both at the same time yeah he's definitely heading toward Beauregard to hit him looking at our available upgrades in civil and military counter propaganda uh, each level there will increase the, or will reduce the enemy's support in his loyal states. 
because I'm going to choose a level on that. Uh, support of our nation and conquered states and territories. No, I need something that builds my own support. That's probably in propaganda, but we don't have enough to do this. We have 608,000 in available subsidy funding. We need 2 million. Uh, let's see, where is that? That's in... Politics. Yeah, we just don't have enough. All right, we got exactly what we were after over here in southeastern Kentucky. We've got the Army of East Tennessee coming in from one side, the Army of Tennessee from the other. It's going to be 21 hours waiting on the Army of Tennessee to show up, though. So our 30,000 men of the Army of East Tennessee, with their very low morale, are going to have to hang on against pretty overwhelming odds, at least for the first few hours. Okay, so we've got most of the map going for us here. He's going to be coming in from this side. Looks like our reinforcements will come in from this corner. So we've got to figure out where it is we want to dig in. Where is the objective is the other question that we have to defend. It's over here in this open area. It's not a bad area for me to defend here. Dig in with some fortifications uh, over in that sector and then just hunker down and hold on. That's pretty much all we got to do here. Okay, here's our defensive position. Uh, a couple of our units are going to have to be rebuilt after this battle. Sardinian Infantry's only got 200 men. Sandhill Sharpshooters 199. I'm not sure how that happened, but we'll get them reconstituted and built back up to full strength after this battle. So what we've got to do now is we've got to hang on while we wait for 25 hours or so um, it's what, almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's going to be next afternoon before we get them into position. So it's going to be quite a while. Okay, the spot that I left open is, of course, where he's going to be hitting me. So uh, we're going to start by rushing Barksdale over there with the 2nd Sicilian Cavalry. Uh, and then we're going to have to start shifting units that direction. We'll start with the Kentucky Colonels. We'll get them moved over there as quickly as we can, but not like that. Bailed out by the end of the day. You know, in hindsight, I really wasn't thinking in my deployment because it should have been obvious to me they would be coming down the road and that I should have dug in more on this side. I was thinking open ground, perfect place for fortifications. Wasn't even thinking about where the enemy would be coming from. So that was a major mistake on my fault, uh, on my part, uh, in terms of how I did my deployment. But we thankfully have been bailed out by the end of the day, which is going to allow us to redeploy. Uh, now we have to try and figure out the best way to go about this. So now, as we get into today, let's see what the estimated arrival is. Five hours away. So they're coming a little earlier than initially projected when it said 25 hours yesterday. So that's good. we got to hang on for five hours. Well, more than that because it's going to take a while longer for them to actually arrive when they do get on the battlefield. But in the meantime, the action heats up. Sand Hill Red Hats facing it right now. We have the Kuiper Dragoons back here, ready to go in if needed somewhere. I did extend my line a little bit past the creek, and it looks like that may have been a good decision as he tries to extend his. So the first, first Georgia is going to be over there along with the Orphan Brigade. Bourbon Rebels are in a quiet sector at the moment. In fact, we may be able to turn them and get them firing on weed. I'm going to hold these guys right here just because... Oh, that's a mix of muskets. That's not even a... That's a uh, replenishment brigade. Let's pull them back. The Kuiper Dragoons on the line. Alpine Mountaineers. Gonna start getting into the fray here. 
is now 1864, January of 1864. So far, casualties are looking good. Remember, he's got a huge advantage in numbers, so we haven't even seen a portion of his army. It's around there somewhere. Hopefully he doesn't try to get around me over here, because I'll be in big trouble if he starts marching on this flank. As long as we keep the front small, we're in good shape. taking casualties. They're almost at 50% casualties as it is. Oh, his division commander's all the heck, all the way the heck over here. That's why it's taking so long. Hang on, red hats. Morale's good. Casualties are good. As long as he doesn't load up too heavy on me with all his numbers. I'll make sure all my guns are firing. They are. That's helping a lot with the casualty numbers because he's only got, you know, just this handful of brigades on the line. And I've got a lot of artillery firing on those positions probably why we're seeing the numbers like they are. That and the fact that we're in fortifications on the right. Alright, now Johnson's brigade is going to get fire on these guys. They're not going to last very long. 650 men, 1,400 casualties. That's crazy. How are they hanging on? We're about to turn the Union flank over here. We might just hang on without even getting our reinforcements. Provided he doesn't show up in force on my right flank. Pull him back. Alright, all that combat lasted only about an hour. Let's push up and see if we can't hit Terry here. Sandhill Red Hats are in good shape. They're about to get their Sharpshooter 2 perk which will give them even more accuracy. There, now we're starting to see more of his force. They're sitting back there. Let's see what their accuracy goes to at Sharpshooter 2. 25% instead of 10%. Beautiful. Come on, guys. Get up on that line, please. All right, I don't know who gave permission for McNair uh, and the Kentucky and the Sandhill Red Hats to charge in, but he just on his own just charged in there and broke two brigades in the process. That that's the first time I've ever seen a unit take that kind of initiative on my side, where he just kind of on his own decided to march out there. But it worked beautifully. Now he's just got to get back because he's taken massive casualties from Curtis. Hinman to get up there on the line. Come on, McNair, get back. Oh, there he goes again. Now he's getting back. In the process, though, he took 200 casualties. And now he's lost a little bit of that initiative that he had. There, but he's back in cover now. Hinman just will not move up to this line no matter how many times I tell him to. Where are we at on the reinforcements? Three hours. Coming from the south, southeast. So, they're actually going to be coming from over here. Okay, that's cool. That actually works out nicely. Because he'll come right in over here and up this line and just nail the Union if they haven't already fled. Hinman's finally moving. Union's advancing on the Bourbon Rebels here in the center. They're about to get their sharpshooter to, to perk. Yeah, 
See, he's got the numbers and he's going to use them. He's going to keep advancing at me. So I've got to watch. I do have some places that I, I can reinforce if needed. McNair's lost a thousand men now, the Sand Hill Red Hats. So have the Kentucky Colonels. That's my center. Henman, stop exposing your flank, dude. Jeez. There we go. That's better. Let's get Barksdale up there and behind him. Pull the Swamp Riders up here, too. Actually, I'm going to put Swamp Riders behind McNair, because this is the, the spot I'm worried about. Is in, in the center. Alpine Mountaineers now getting into the action. Kuiper Dragoons are hanging on so far. Numbers now 9,500 casualties for the Union, 3,600 for me. Even with that, the percentages are still in my favor. Just slightly. All right, we just got to hang on till the reinforcements get here. I'm a little worried. Hinman's lost over 50% now. Kentucky Colonel's added some major casualties there. But he's still pretty solid. If you look at his morale, it's determined. Who was wounded? Hinman was. All right, let's get them out of here. Their morale's going to drop now. We'll put Barksdale up on the line. back boys who's low on ammo McNair right here Sand Hill Red Hats they've lost 1200 men now man 10,000 casualties for the Union how we doing John our Beauregard two hours still oh we're looking good but man two hours is a long time with the casualties we've taken Barksdale, no, don't face that way. Come on, dude, what are you doing? Opening yourself up to major casualties like that. Bourbon Rebels have lost six, 600 men. McNair's still pretty high. Barksdale, turn around. What the heck? Thank you. Problem is he doesn't have the range to fire on these guys. How are we doing out on the flank? We're good. There's some artillery over here that concerns me a little bit. Goodness. I gotta move first Georgia up so we can get them firing. Orphan Brigade's getting low on ammo. They've only lost 20 men. Come on, boys, hang on. Everybody hang on. We're inflicting two to one casualties. We just charged my cavalry. And so now my guys are going to mount up and defend themselves. Let's see what happens here. Looks like it's working out. Come on. No, don't break, Barksdale. You just broke the center of my line. All right, Swamp Riders, you're into position now. Problem is I have no more units to plug the holes. And McNair may not hold. Oh boy. Suddenly that time seems like forever. 
It's still saying two hours. I don't know if we have two hours. Uh, we're getting low on ammo. McNair's at almost 50% casualties. Rebels have lost over a thousand men now. Oh, this is getting bad. He just has too much firepower on the line. It's shifting back toward defeat. Even though we're still inflicting two to one casualties, the percentages are rising. Oh, man. Army of East Tennessee is taking a shellacking right now. 30% casualties in the army. All while we wait for Beauregard to show up. I'm just afraid it's going to be too late because the Union units are all really solid right now. I don't see anybody close to breaking. He's going to charge in and try to break the Bourbon Rebels who have already lost 60%. Exactly what I'd be doing. Come on, Posey, get across that water need you firing. Oh, boy. Oh, we broke Zook. That helps. Still, they're at 60% casualties. The Bourbon Rebels have lost 1,700 men. Oh, wow. The fact they're hanging on is amazing. He's just going to charge everybody into that hole now. We're going to lose this battle before... Posey was wounded. We're going to lose this battle before the other army arrives, I'm afraid. Just taking too many casualties. Ugh. Now Johnson was wounded, so the Bourbon Rebels lost their commander. Posey's down. There goes. There they go. That's probably going to do it. Ah, oh, boy. We've got these Whitworth rifles here, which have a 600-yard range. It's amazing. Beauregard arrives. Of course he does, right when my line starts to break. Uh, but that shifted things over to uh, toward victory. Now we just... Oh, he came from down here. I was expecting him to come from over here. Oh, south-southeast, I guess, would be down there. This would be east-southeast. All right, Beauregard. Let's get him up there. Wow. The moment Beauregard arrived on the battlefield, he started pulling out. He knows. Man, he was so close to winning this battle. So, so close. Another hour he would have had me. But what an epic stand by Stephen Dill Lee and the Army of East Tennessee who have lost 10,000 men in the process but held. They lost two brigade commanders, lost 10,000 men, all kinds of ammunition expended, but they held the line. Wow, what a battle. January 10th and 11th, 1864. Beauregard gets the credit for showing up and saving the day, but that battle was all about Stephen Lee and the Army of East Tennessee. 18,000 casualties inflicted on Halleck. That is gonna shift them a little further toward the end of the war. We'll see how close we are at this point. It'll give us some statistics on the percentage drop. He's at 32 or so on his national morale. Like we said, once that drops below 25, it's over. He lost one and a half percent. That's huge. Looks like the French have taken Frederick, Maryland and darned if they aren't marching on Washington DC itself. Look at them go. They're, uh, they're actually, um, actually it looks like some fighting's going on here. I don't know who. I don't know if that's the British and I just can't see them. That may be what's going on. Yeah, the British have taken Baltimore. The French have taken Frederick, Maryland. And it must be the British who are actually attacking Washington now. That is crazy. All right, so the Army of Massachusetts is over here. If we win a few more of those victories where we knock him down by 1.5%, that'd pretty much be it. 
Uh, so I'm gonna actually send Johnston over to deal with that army of Massachusetts. We haven't fought with Johnston's Corps for a while. What's Stonewall Jackson up to? Army of Mississippi is here. He's in pretty good readiness. He's not got he's not had a lot to eat, but uh, we're gonna go pursue the Army of the Hudson. We may be getting darn close to this thing being over. But I'm gonna wrap it up right there. I have a feeling, I have a feeling the next episode could be it, but we'll see. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And uh, just to let you know, because I've had some people asking, hey, if I sign up for a patron unit, is it too late to request it? No, it's not too late, though you may not see a lot of action in this particular campaign, but we'll immediately start a new union campaign with the same rules. The same rules, which are that I can only recruit patron units, which is going to be a unique challenge for the Union because I'll have to be aggressive and be on the attack. It's one thing to defend as the Confederates and to hang on for dear life with inferior numbers. It's quite another to do that as the Union, so I think it'll be a greater challenge. Uh, so even if you do sign up now, if your unit doesn't get into this campaign, it'll certainly be in the next one. In fact, I'll probably post pretty soon over on Patreon uh, getting you to start submitting your requests for that campaign. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.